Hi everyone, um, welcome back to our What's Cooking with DP. So exciting to have everybody with us. Um, today, once again, we've got some amazing um, entertainment, for want of a better word. But we're going to start off with Narosha and we're going to do a little update. And then after that, we've got two special guests. So please stick around, we've really got some fun for you. Hi Narosha. Hi Shelly. hi everyone. Lovely to have you with us again. So Thank it's you. quite exciting, Narosh, today, because I see that NCL has launched its um, its whole new um, peace of mind, sales safe sort of protocol, and there's, there's five points. So I thought it would be nice if we can just touch on those quickly. Absolutely. Um, and then if I can just mention, sorry, to the participants, if there are any Q&As, just ask the questions during the chat, but we will reply off because we've quite time constrained today. Okay. Okay, awesome. Okay, so yes, thanks Shelley and, and um, yeah, NCL has launched the phase one of the um, health and safety program. We need to get this right, so it is a layered approach, but um, I'll just go through the, the six main steps that we've started with and then just give you guys a little bit of feedback on it and like Shelley said, if you have any questions around this, just send it through to them and they'll um, come through to me and I'll get the answers for you. Perfect. So, so the first one obviously is enhanced screening protocols, which is really important. I think it's going to be a big Yes, question. absolutely. So all guests will undergo an extensive pre-embarkation health screening. Um, there'll be touchless temperature checks and continuous monitoring of guests and crew throughout the voyage. So this will happen prior to embarkation upon returning to the ship. So when guests are on a port call, when they get back onto the ship, they'll check their temperature again prior to meals in dining venues prior to any activities in the public areas, as well as disembarkation again. So to make sure that when our guests get on board the ships and when they get off the ships, they're completely health, uh, healthy and safe, you know, to even go and visit or, or travel further after the cruise. Wonderful. And then the next point, increased sanitation measures. Of course, once again, top of mind, you know, going into stores, anything like that, there's always these sanitation measures. So how is the NCL adapting that? Absolutely. So, you know, NCL is well known to be the clean ship or the clean um, cruise line in the industry. So all our ships are disinfect disinfected and evaluated and certified virus-free when they enter uh, re-enter service. You know, we have 17 vessels. We're going to launch five ships per month, depending obviously on which um, ports are opening. Our CEO um, says he'll do everything possible to make sure that he can look his grandchildren or his 80-year-old mother in the eye and tell them that it's safer than ever to board any of our ships because we've done these, um, you know, we've put these protocols in place. So um, we have a 24-hour prevention schedule, um, which will feature continuous disinfection of public areas as well as high traffic touch points. So we'll make sure that we um, bring more crew onto our ships to even just look after sanitization specifically on any NCL ship. Oh, fantastic. Good to know. And then all new air filtration, of course, another big question about air, how pure it is and clean it is. Yeah, so this is a game changer for NCL. They've invest billion, invested billions of, of dollars on this. So all our ships are currently um, either ported or dry docked and we have a company coming in and installing all this new air, filtra air filtration systems um, onto, any of, onto all of our ships. Um, basically, it's hospital grade air filters. It's called HEPA. This removes 99.97 of airborne pathogens um, to ensure that the air that you breathe is completely clean. Basically, what pathogens are, it's, it's to remove any bacteria or any um, floating diseases. So it is definitely, um, you know, going to be absolutely brilliant so that no um, disease or bacteria floats in the air. So it's completely, completely clean air that you breathe okay. in. Great, great. And then the next point is responsible social distancing. So this is, um, you know, it's going to be a phase in, in, in um, discussion or what we're working on is different areas or different ideas. So to provide more um, space for social distancing, guest capacity on board will be reduced. We're waiting to hear how that's going to work. You know, how many cabins will be filled, which areas will be filled first, you know, in each category, how many insides, how many ocean view, balcony, etc. Um, it would be a staggered disembarkation and disembarkation process. 
um, you know, there'll be proper social distancing on board in the guest relations areas, in the dining areas. So um, NCL is definitely working on reducing ca capacity in different um, public areas and, you know, even in the, the dining areas, etc. Okay, fantastic. And then enhanced medical resources. So is that with, within the cruise ship? Are we talking about? Absolutely. So we're working with um, experts. NCL has, has hired experts to, to assist them with this, as well as the CDC in the USA. So we're going to bring extra um, doctors on board for the first maybe year of, of sailing. So onboard medical centers will be fully equipped with the latest testing kits and medical supplies, including onboard testing for COVID-19. We're increasing our medical team fleet-wide and we're adding new dedicated public health officers on every single one of our ships. So there's, there'll be continuous um, medical um, checks on our ships and you know we have the resources now to, to make sure that we can run with this program. Absolutely. And then last ex extended ship to shore safety, what does that mean? Yeah, so you know, obviously we can do everything on board, but when guests get on off the ship and they're going to do an excursion or they're going, going to a city, we need to make sure that when they get back onto the ship that they're still healthy. So we're partner, partnering with local destinations and tour operators to ensure that our industry leading health and sanitization protocols extend to the shore, shoreside experience as well. We will only visit safe, open ports of call, which may cause changes to your itinerary. Keeping in mind our guests are up to keeping in mind our guests up to date, and um, with the latest confirmed changes impacting their itineraries is top of priority. So, making sure that when they get off the ship, that the, the people we're dealing with on port or at port, whether it's the port agents or the tour operators, the shore excursions people are all following the exact same health and safety protocols as us and then just making sure that when the guests get back onto the ship that they're 100% healthy to make sure that we avoid any spread of, of disease that they could have picked up when they were in port. Okay, that's brilliant and thank you for covering that and I'm sure you'll have a webinar where you're going to cover everything, you know, in Absolutely. depth. This is phase um, one and there'll be much more. I know there's lots of questions around activities on the ship wearing masks, you know, there's lots of questions and this will come as days go by. So we are working on this and we will update you all as we get more information. Fantastic. So thanks for your time again and we hope we look forward to seeing you next week, Wednesday. Same time, same place. Thank you guys. Keep safe. Cheers. And now I'm going to call on Tanya and um, we've got a very special guest today, Tanya, because what are we actually we speaking about is a focus on our beach products and especially Mauritius. And um, Tanya is a very dear friend of ours and one of our top um, supporters for DP. So Tanya and I thought we'll just have a nice little chat about her experience with DP. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure and thanks for spending some precious time with us. I know how hectic it is at the moment with all of no, us at home, so etc. Et <laughs> yeah, all good. But Tanya, I just wanted to ask you, um, what are your thoughts on our Mauritius product and pricing? Because I think that's a big question, you know, for the industry. So I think initially, obviously, DP has always been a cruising um, thought. You know, you think of, of DP and cruising. So your beaches product, um, you know, isn't always something that comes to mind immediately. But your consultants have changed that. So um, they, they definitely, um, they allow you to think more about DP and a beach option um, by offering the right pricing um, and, and also going back. So, so they're happy to compare if your pricing isn't obviously up to scratch, they will go back, have a look, see why it's not. And they've always come back and proven that the pricing is great. So they're knowledgeable, they're passionate about Mauritius, they, they really want to push it and sell it. Um, and what I love as well is that after a quote's been sent, each and every time they follow up on that quote, they want to know it client was happy, if you've received the quote, if there are there other options that you're wanting. So, so they, they do go the extra mile to follow up um, and, and see if the quote hasn't been successful, why, and what they can do in future to, you know, to convert it into a successful booking. Oh, thank you. That's brilliant. And have you found um, the quotes easy to read and understand? Because I think that is a big question, you know, from, a, from a, um, the fact that we were a little bit more manual, you know, than most companies. Yes. You know, not sort of just punching out quotes. How did you find that? To work? Perfect. So it comes in, um, in an email format. And, and what's great as well is every resort that's quoted, 
they attach an information sheet on the resort. So it's always nice to send that to your clients along with the quote. Um, the information is detailed, there's not too much, so it's not overbearing. Um, and the actual quote in the email format is easy to read. Um, you can copy and paste what you want, you can type out in your own format if you prefer. So yeah, absolutely fine. Oh, great. Um, and then I know you also come through for a lot of cruising and, and touring, you know, we've obviously got our other products and just the sort of thing I'd like to or ask or just understand is what makes you think of DP, you know, what sort of brings us to mind if, if you think of phoning DP? Um, Michelle, I think it's relationships. Again, you know, you build relationships, relationships in the industry and um, I've been lucky enough to form a great relationship with Hoshana. Um, in your cruising department, she um, her, her knowledge of cruising is unbelievable. She she always thinks out the box. You know, she she knows what to offer and how to offer it, um, and just also being available all the time. So if I've got a question after hours, you know, you don't abuse it, but you can always phone and ask the question. The support is unbelievable. So for me, it's about relationships, and if you've got great relationships with your suppliers, as good as you've got with your clients, then you know it makes it, it makes your job so much easier. So Absolutely. from a pricing point of view, but also just um, just going the extra mile, knowing their products. Um, yeah, I mean, you, I haven't found any better. So I'm, I'm happy with Hosh and I'm happy with you guys. So all good. Brilliant, brilliant. And um, yes, but you've actually, I was going to say, how do you find our service? But I think we've actually covered that now because, yeah. you know, we've spoken about it to say. And I do think it's important just to reiterate to everyone on the webinar that we really, really do pride ourselves in that extra service going the extra mile and that we are available 24-7. Um, and, you know, it's good for you to to endorse that and say that, if, you know, you have had that experience because there's no, definitely. Worse. And Charles, if the consultant sounds available, you're available, Jax is available. You know, everyone's always available to assist um, and you're quite happy to give your cell numbers out. And I think, you know, from a travel point of view, you need that after hours, just someone to, to back you up if something does go wrong or right. And, you know, if you exactly. need to call at eight o'clock at night, because the client wants it, it's, it's what we deal with and it's how things are in the industry today. And it's just great to know that you guys are always there to do that. So I think more so than pricing, it's about the relationship. Yes. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time, Tanya. I really, really appreciate you spending this time with us. Um, and hopefully we'll chat again soon. Definitely. Take care. Cheers. You too. And I'm going to hand over to Jen now. And Jen is going to do a really nice little presentation on her experiences within Mauritius and um, some of the products that we sell. So over to you, Jen. Hello, Chef Shelley. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Happy to be here. So I'm reporting live from the beach. Um, so as you all know, we've been rocking the beaches game for over a year now, and it's been absolutely fabulous. Um, we offer a fabulous selection of hotels in Mauritius, Zanzibar, as well as Maldives. We are also destination experts in Bali and Thailand. And um, as Jackie mentioned last week, we're really excited to add local travel to our portfolio. So we have amazing negotiated rates with these hotels. And in addition to that, we can package those brilliant negotiated rates with brilliant negotiated rates on airfares. So you can really just leave it to us to give you a, a really good package. In our team, we've all been to these destinations. And of course, in true DP style, our focus is always on service and really just getting the sale and at the end of the day, helping you get the sale as well. Um, the climate currently is looking quite positive. It looks like local travel is gonna be opening up soon. Um, thereafter, you know, we forecast uh, an increase in bookings in Mauritius and Zanzibar again. And then a short well, time after that, we think that good budget um, holidays and destinations are going to be king again. So your Thailand's and Bali's. So we're not quite there yet, but it's looking positive. I mean, personally for me, a month ago, I thought I was going to be, you know, stuck at home still until October. But we're really getting there and we're really excited on the rear side. We're just really excited to get some inquiries in and interact with you again. <laughs> we've missed that a lot. So um, today, I just wanna go through, so we've sort of heard that Mauritius is now COVID free and we're hoping that we're gonna be able to sell Mauritius again. So for me, I'm just gonna go through five Mauritius hotels that stood out for me personally. The first hotel that um, I think is worth a mention is Preskill. It's a great hotel because it's close to the airport. It's really accommodating for families. 
I have not personally been there since the refurb, but I've only heard great reviews um, since, you know, after the refurb from the people that we have sold Preskill to and all of our uh, trade partners. And even before the refurb, I loved Preskill. I thought the rooms were, you know, nicely sized. I loved the fresh vibe. And um, yeah, I think it's a really, really good hotel. The next hotel that I'd like to mention is Tamasa. I just love this hotel. I love the color scheme. I love the vibe. I, lo I like that it's lively. There's always something to do. This hotel is, of course, as you know, a four-star hotel run by Lux. So it is run really like a five-star establishment in terms of service. And I think any agent who's been on an air to Tomasa on a Wednesday or a Saturday will know about the nightclub that they have um, on site. Um, the nightclub's open on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And what really helps is that it's an all-inclusive hotel. So while you are quality checking, quality testing the, the quality of the nightclub, you can also um, quality check the rum <laughs> and as much alcohol as you like. <laughs> The next hotel that I'd like to mention that I really, really liked was Maritime Resort and Spa. It's actually currently being refurbished now. I really love this hotel for two reasons. So the first reason is a spa. I thought the spa was absolutely glorious with the outdoor showers and the relaxation areas and, you know, all the treatments that they offer. The second reason I love this hotel is I just love the style. It's, um, you know, the dark woods and also the sort of activities that you get on there, get at the, at the resort, make you feel really fancy. It's like the old British style with the equestrian center, a nine hole golf course, archery, croquet. Um, yeah, so I thought this was a really nice hotel as well. The next hotel um, that I'd like to talk about is Outrigger. I know a lot of people have said that it needs a bit of a refurb now, but Outrigger will always have a special place in my heart. Let me tell you why. <laughs> so my first ever educational, and I was very, very new to travel, um, I went to, the very first hotel I went to was Outrigger, and I just thought this was the most incredible thing ever. I've never been to such a fancy hotel in my life. And so I went into the room, I took a look at this glorious big round bath, and I took a lovely bath and then as you do, you start looking around at the room, digging through the doors and then the drawers and then I found the mini bar. <laughs> so halfway through opening a tin of peanuts, I found the price list for the mini bar. <laughs> and it turned out that I would have to pay the hotel like 300 Rand for a tin of peanuts. But um, it turns out they gave it to me for free at the end. So that was that was very nice of them. So yeah, I think Outrigger is really nice. The beach is the beach is just beautiful. The the sand is like fluffy underneath your feet. And I I just think it's a really nice, good for value, good value for money hotel. Um the last hotel that I'd like to touch on is something a little bit different. It's Life in Blue Azuri. This is more of a self-catering um, holiday villa. As you can see, it's got a fully cooked kitchen. And the reason I like this is because I've never um, had a holiday here specifically, but I mean, once we, you know, me and a couple of friends did the same sort of concept in Belita, and it was absolutely lovely. We just had a self-catering villa. Um, it was like three or four bedrooms and we all shared and we all took turns to cook. Um, Close to Life in Blue Azuri, there are grocery stores, so you can, um, you know, it's easy to get groceries and whatever you need for the self-catering part. And the best thing about it is in terms of price. I mean, uh, for a three-bedroom apartment, you're looking at 13,500 Rand for seven nights. So three bedrooms, six people, you're looking at about 2,800 per person, which I think is really good for a Mauritius holiday. So um, it's, it's really great for families. Um, yeah, so that's me. Thank you so much. And back to Chef Shelly. Thank you, Jen. That was really, really interesting. And I love the peanut story. Um, there's always that lesson about mini bars, isn't there? And now I'm going to hand over to Robin Christie, um, a very, very, very dear friend to um, DP and to Jackie and Jane. Um, over to you, Rob, who's going to do a little bit of, spend a little bit of time with us. do a sing and dance have I been unmuted by the host 
Yes, you can go. Sorry, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I am an exhibitionist and I'm finding this virtual stuff very difficult. I'm somebody who likes to hear you laugh, uh, see you smile, and I also love to touch. And, and I think if Jonathan is on the line, he'll know that I do a lot of touching. I, I really enjoy it. So hi, everybody. And um, thank you for, the, for this little opportunity. I mean, I'm just so desperate to see people and chat. But talking to you in this way, I, I said to Jackie, it's a bit like arriving at a, at a conference as a speaker and they, they lead you through to a table and then there's just a table of name tags in front of you and you stand in front of the name tags and you say hi good morning it's it's really wonderful to see you and um great pleasure for me to be here so it's it's a little awkward but um i am getting the hang of it and actually for for the most part i find it really quite effective i must tell you i think the the this kind of communication and to as a business to try and speak to as many people as you can in one shot it's fantastic so uh, for those of you who don't know me, I've been around for a, a very long time. I am, DP is particularly close to my heart because I am so fond of all of you. And uh, Shell, it's not just that I'm friends with Jackie and Jane, I'm also friends with you and you, Jen, you know that. So it's lovely and I love working with them. But uh, I have been in the industry for a very long time. I've been in the corporate world for, I started working in 1980, so that's a hell of a long time. And um, I, two years ago, I think menopause got the better of me. I just got cut full and had enough of everybody and their story and wanted to tell them all what to do. And I decided I was going to go on my own. And um, it's been fantastic. I've loved it. I've loved every minute of it. Of course, my focus has been on the travel industry and conferencing. So um, you can imagine what my bank account looks like today, probably similar to what all of your bank accounts look like, because uh, Consulting to the travel industry, well, they don't want my consultation right now. And uh, conferencing, well, sorry for you, it's uh, on the back burner. So I think I have to say I've been in a constant state of reinvention uh, of myself. And um, I, you know, I, I always know as, as tough as it is. And, and right now, I know for all of us, for all of you, as well as for me, I promise you it's tough. Um, and when you have financial stress, it's, uh, there's, it becomes all consuming. It's very difficult to actually step out of that and, and see a bigger picture. But when you do reinvent yourself and when you do come out of it, you actually, it's, it, it makes you a bit bulletproof. You, you actually get a, a sense of strength and, and courage for, that you never knew you, you could have. I'm hoping that's gonna, the story's gonna end that way for me as well. Um, but in the interim, it's, uh, we're having to do a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of dancing and certainly a lot of juggling. You may remember, if you had attended a conference in the last two years, somebody, some very clever speaker, and let me tell you, speakers are more so clever. I'm not one of them, but a lot of them are very clever. And particularly if they're futurists, and I know they're clever because they've told me a lot of the time how clever they are. But a futurist for the last two years has been saying, mm, you know what, you guys in the travel industry, travel and tourism is really gonna be in a bad way because everything, fourth industrial revolution, the internet of things, uh, automation, artificial intelligence, it was going to overcome us. And, and once again, we were going to be disintermediated by something electronic. And I know, because I worked with a lot of you in, in the process, it was daunting. And it did become really a, a, a very, almost a showstopper for you. Because we suddenly had to rush out and get the latest technology and make sure that we were all up to date and everything was okay. And um, I'm, I'm, almost asking the question, if technology was so clever, why didn't they tell us that this pandemic was coming along? Because suddenly, I don't hear anybody talking about, uh, talking about the technology that's going to ruin our lives. I just hear about everybody saying that pandemic is going to ruin our lives. And once again, uh, once again, sadly, the travel industry is on the receiving end of it. So the pandemic has come along and we've just replaced one fear with another fear. And unfortunately, what results with that is that as a travel industry, we end up with a bit of a low self-esteem. We're always struggling to survive. If it's not the airlines against us, it's our customers going direct. If it's not our customers going direct, it's our suppliers going direct. All those things and it ends up actually eating us, eating us away. So I know that if those were issues in your life before lockdown, uh, I think that those issues were amplified during lockdown because lockdown was just a sensation and a time we'd never ever known. It was 
I keep on saying it was a bit of a gift because we were given a gift of time where it wasn't your fault, it wasn't about your brand, it wasn't about anything that you'd caused, but you'd been given the same amount of time as everybody else. Nobody else could get started without you. But it did highlight to you some of the more bigger problems, I'm sure. And sadly, if you went into lockdown in a bad relationship, I don't know that you would have come out of it in a good relationship. If you were slightly sad going in, you were probably very sad going out because that time on your own and that time in, in isolation as such ha has the opportunity to amplify all of the, the challenges that we've gone through, which is why I'm also really, and I'll touch on it later, but it's just so important to reach out, reach out to people who, we didn't expect who may not have actually been going through such a great time and we didn't think that they they needed us but it doesn't matter just reach out but at the same time there's some really good stories in out of coming out of lockdown uh, and i'm sure you all have a few i know that i am not completely self-sufficient i never knew i could live without eating out i never knew that i could live without buying cappuccino every day i never knew that uh, i could actually quite enjoy the time in my own environment and the time to to do stuff that I've always wanted to do. So I think coupled with the good and the bad stories, it's for us it's about what are we going to go into in into the future. And and everybody, you know, when you read about it, they're talking about, oh well, this is not normal and we've what we've been through has been normal and you didn't like that. So now you must move on to the new normal. And nobody knows what the hell the new normal is going to be about. But at the same time, it's an opportunity for us to, to reset. So there's a, a thing in life called your frame of reference. Your frame of reference is really the point of view that you come to an opinion, how you formulate your, your opinion. And your frame of ref reference is influenced by your childhood, what, what the values and the conversations that you heard as a child. If you came out of a family that was staunchly left or staunchly right, you probably have been influenced by those viewpoints, unless you studied and saw another world and read and discovered that there was another opinion. But your frame of reference is also molded by the, the company you keep. So your, your mates, your friends, you all have, we, we, we choose each other because we like each other. And the Afrikaans expression of uh, <laughs> so my Afrikaans not so good, surt, surt, surt. we look for, are, are, are sort of those that are like us. And that sometimes reinforces that frame of reference. So whenever we have an opinion, we go back to the reference point we started with and we build that on that. So if we're irritated with the government, if we're irritated with lockdown, if we think uh, the tobacco ban, uh, all of the things, and I have to just say, because it's not something I, I like doing, but today of all days, when you look and see what is going on in the world, is really a time for us all to just challenge the point of reference that we we come to the conversation with because the it's you can see that things are going to change and things have to change we really are in a in a in a difficult status so difficult time so our peers our friends our boyfriends our lovers are ultimately our husbands very often and and as partners we if the, the stronger of the two personalities will end up where you actually leaning to what his or her opinion may be and whether it was what you grew up with, you might kind of lean that way. And sometimes that's great, but sometimes it's actually not so great. So your frame of reference becomes a very strong viewpoint for you. It also is where a lot of your value system starts. So if you've been brought up in a, in a home where your family are quite giving and you will help people on the side of the road or you will donate to charities or you will do charitable work or you live with a heart that is charitable uh, or if you are generous, if you are generous with your money, if you're generous with your time, most importantly, if you're gen generous with your heart and your affection, um, if it's come through a family, that's kind of where your reference is and becomes part of your, your value system. Going forward, I think you've had lockdown to relook at your point of reference and your, your, your frame of reference as such. It's been the time that we've all had to say, actually, you know what, this stuff isn't so important anymore. And, and running around like a lunatic, I don't have to do. Business is changing. Business is looking at it and saying, we were so obsessed about having everybody in the office, eight o'clock behind your desk, don't talk, do this, do that. Well, now we're looking and saying, actually, 
get into the computer by eight o'clock and let's do some work, work from home. So I think there's a shift of everything that, that's going on in life, which is, which is actually fantastic. It's a great, great time. And I think we, we probably needed it. So going forward, you, you can't choose your future, unfortunately. And, and um, I was listening to John Senna the other day, and he's an amazing, um, amazing South African speaker. And he was saying, we, we're actually mourning the loss of our future because our future had lots of plans. Our matrix, we're going to matriculate, we're going to have matric dances, they were going to have farewells, they were going to have all those. They didn't have it. For, for us, we had trips planned, we had family reunions, that stuff. The future events and the future milestones in our lives have changed somewhat. And we probably are mourning that more than we are the big, the big shuffle. But there's lots of things that you can control and there's a huge amount that you can't control. Unfortunately, we spend too much time talking about the things we can't control. And we don't always worry about the things we can control. So when you look at your influences in life, and, and the influence is your family, your friends, your kids, your husband, your, your life together, all of that, that's the stuff that you can control. And that's where your choices have to be very strong. And the choice that the most important choice you need to make is how am I going to come out of lockdown? What, is, what am I going to be at the end of this lockdown? Can't change any of them, but I'm going to choose to do things better. Maybe not differently, but better. And all it means is the norm will continue to be in a routine. You'll always have a routine that you have to follow. There will always be uh, automated things that you do at work, but there will be some things that you're going to say, I'm going to do this, this, this differently. So you've had 68 days in, in lockdown and I have to say, what is it that you, what you have done? What have you done? So spoken a bit about the personal side and family, and I'm sure you've cooked and you've had game nights and you've watched movies on certain nights and Netflix and all that stuff. And I, and I hope it's been good for you. I hope, I hope the chill part of the Netflix was really good because for some of us, that was uh, something that we just read about sometimes, but you've got customers and, and, I think that your customers have missed you terribly because there's one thing that the travel industry and each of you, and I've had a look at the, pan, the guys on this, uh, on this uh, panel today. I mean, you're all characters, you're huge characters and your customers, I promise you, have missed that because what comes with you is a lovely story. You talk about stuff that dreams are made of. You talk about destinations. You talk about all the stuff that Jen was talking about. Wonderful. Who, who gets to do that? Well, you do. But you need to make sure that your customers know where you are now, they know who you are, they know what you're doing and how you're doing it. And I think your, their expectations of you are high. They, they continue to grow. They, they know that you did such a great job earlier, you're going to continue to do that. So there's a high expectation. Don't let them down. Don't let them down. Go back in and make sure that they are kept abreast, informed, they know what's happening, they know what you can offer them. And they can only, you can only do that if you've taken a very good hard look at your customer base. Now in, in that corporate world, they call it customer relationship management and you can buy very expensive tools that manage it. But actually your, your notebooks and your telephone indexes and your files and your, your drawer that are all PCI non-compliant, sorry to say, just to add, to add that, are probably your best CRM system you could ever imagine. But don't waste it. Go into it and make some sense of order of it. Because that is, if I had to come along and say, I've got a buyer who's going to sell, buy your, your business, they're not interested in anything else other than that very rich customer base. And if it's all over the place, it means nothing. So find out who are your top 10? Who spent the most with you in the last year, in the last two years, in the last five years? Where have they been? Where do they, where do they enjoy the most? What do they like? If it's cruising, if it's beach, if it's local, get them and then start talking to them. So I know that I have, uh, um, uh, they call it nuggets. I mean, I, the only, I can't even, I've got diamonds, but I don't have nuggets, unfortunately. But my biggest nugget is um, in, this, in this period of, of this pandemic, don't put lipstick on before you put your mask on, because it's not pretty when you take your mask off. That's about the most important thing I could, could tell you, and it, it's true. Um, but, Mainly, think how you spend. Think how you spend your money. 
your time and your energy. Because we've all seen, nobody expected that we were gonna have salaries reduced or zeroed. If you haven't got that resource, believe me, life is becomes, your frame of reference changes completely and your life becomes unmanageable. As I'm sure many of us, and I'm gonna throw myself in there because my resources are coming to an end. So I'm having to look at uh, uh, a number of different things, but, but that's the reality. Your energy, choose your energy, think of how you're spending it. If you're spending it on, on social media, and I'm not even talking about interesting Facebook, if you're watching all those God awful videos of people fighting and, and strange things that people do, and you get sucked into it so quickly, and that's usually what we do at night, and you go to bed with all of that in your mind, it's not good, I promise you it's not good. So if I had to give you five things that I would say in, in closing, I hope I haven't gone over, but five things that I think you should do on a, on a daily basis. And we've still got June, we may have July, um, but for the most part, things are happening. And I think things are happening sooner. And when I talk about some of the good things that are coming out of this pandemic, it's that perhaps our expectations were really low before, and now every little bit we get, we're very grateful for. So uh, I was I host a, a weekly call with the um, business buyers, the travel buyers uh, in the country, and we've been having some very interesting conversations with people this morning with somebody from AXA and what they're doing at the airport and the future of travel and how they're going to travel and that they are gearing up and they're having to gear up from an airline perspective, from a, an air side, from a non-air side, you know, all the, the different revenue streams that they've got. So it was quite encouraging to say that I think that things are going to probably move a little quicker than, than we expected. So five things, make five calls a day. Phone, not to your mate, make those calls anyway, but make five business calls a day to your clients. To the guys, the, the customers of yours that may not actually be that easy, but phone them. Don't email them, phone them. And don't talk to them about business. Don't talk, don't ask them for their business when they get back, but phone and, and literally, how are you? No, I really mean that. How are you? Because I've been thinking about you and we do, because that stuff is memorable. Um, get your social media rocking. And I'm telling you that I go onto social media all the time. I'm not a big player, but I am a big voyeur. And I look and see, and I go in on Instagram, and I look at who your followers are. And I can promise you most of the followers following you on Instagram are your competition or your friends, family, and your mates. I'm not sure that they're all your customers. So now's the time to start inviting, bo boosting, and giving them something to look at. It's another whole conversation. There's lots of very good people in the world that can help you with that, but it really is important. Your messaging, whether you're talking on the phone, whether you're emailing, whether you're social media, make it clear. We used to talk about content being king. I think in today's world, context is becoming even more important. The perception of what you're talking about and creating the wrong perception can actually start off a, a wildfire of, of drama for you, even if it is just about product. So these kind of exercises that DP are doing for you are fantastic. Take full advantage and well done for doing it. Don't get perfection paralysis. You know, you're so busy wanting everything to look neat and tidy and what can I say and does this email look, just get it out. Obviously make sure it's, it's not error, full of errors, but get your stuff out, start posting. Don't wait until you know how to do it perfectly. Do it, do it now and, and make it work. And my most important thing, I think, is reach out to each other. We've all said how important communication is and how we miss it. And I do, I tell you, I miss you all. I, I, I miss hugging big time. So be careful because when we are out of this, believe me, it's going to be fine. I'm going to be the biggest hugger. But um, it's important. And there are people that we think are, are okay. Uh, they're not always okay. So, so reach out to them and... Uh, most important thing in everything is make sure that you're okay as well. And uh, if you need you need help or you need something or you want to just talk, reach out to to those that uh, you know will listen and and will help you. And believe me, they come in the most incredible guises. So thanks for this opportunity. Um, well done, guys. Uh, it's it's soon going to all be big time for us, and I look forward to having one of those really drunk sweaty, laughing, stupid, 
lunches, dinners, thirsty Thursdays, flipping Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, whatever it is. I can't wait. So love you lots. Thanks so much. Thanks, Robin. That was absolutely amazing. And I do love you as well. I just, you know, didn't want the whole world to know. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so just to finalize, as you know, I am Chef Shelley. And what would our little webinar be if I don't give you a beautiful recipe? So, of course, we've been to Mauritius. So today I'm going to show you how to make rum in a pineapple. So, of course, you need your pineapple and you need a sharp knife. And, of course, as you can see, I've already cut my pineapple. And then I take out the center. Then it's very important to have pure Mauritian rum. As you can see, this is pure Mauritian rum. And we pour it into our pineapple, just like that. Oh my goodness, imagine I have to taste this, guys. I promise you it's a delicious thing. And then I always like to add a little bit of like a tropical cocktail, because I do think that's important. And then the most fabulous thing is you literally just drink it out of the pineapple. But as you all know, and some wise words from Robin, you've got to think about what you've got and that you don't waste stuff. So I don't know if any of you know that pineapple um, mixed with plain yogurt is fabulous for sunburn, for those of you that have been to Mauritius. So what you do is you literally take a bowl, you add a few pieces of pineapple, and you literally just put it on your face like this. And I promise you, it works wonders for sunburn. You leave it on for a few minutes, and um, the more pineapple you put in, the better, because of course, pineapple's delicious to eat, but it's also very, very, um, it's like exfoliating. So with that in mind, guys, thank you for joining us today. It's been absolutely phenomenal. And I will send you my pineapple and rum cocktail recipe. Can't wait to see you next week. Thank you.